Good morning, everybody, and welcome to my uh, first uh, SIP tutorial. Uh, what I wanted to do is I've looked out, uh, you know, on the internet and looked on YouTube, and I haven't found, you know, a real good, easy to understand source for decoding SIP traces um, or trying to understand the protocol uh, in general. So. So with that being said, what I've done here is I've made an outbound call um, to a phone number and then I disconnected uh, that call just uh, almost immediately after it answered. I just wanted to capture a real simple scenario um, just to kind of uh, dive in slowly and kind of run through that. There's a lot of information in these traces um, and I still learn more every day. Uh, so as I learn it, uh, just as a way to archive it and, and to be able to refer back to it in the future, I'm going to uh, make these videos uh, and share those with anybody that would be interested. So, um, like I said, uh, probably in the previous tutorial, you can use a filter to filter down, uh, you know, large traffic or large uh, captures into smaller ones. Um, in this particular case, I know there's a SIP call that I'm looking for, so I'm going to actually go to telephony. I'm going to go to uh, VoIP calls. And this trace will show me all of the uh, VoIP calls that are contained within this trace or this, uh, this feature. So what it sees here is that this was actually the extension number that I used to make uh, the outbound call. Uh, so this is from my extension to uh, 972-444-3456 and it gives the IP addresses of uh, of the SIP provider as well. Um, it says that it was a completed call. There are eight total packets in the and that's just the signaling side. That's not the, uh, the audio side or the media side. Uh, so in the signal side there are eight packets that are contained within this call. And those are the eight packets that I wanted to, to cover with you today. Uh, the call lasted for 14 seconds, um, and so that'll, that kind of says it detected one VoIP call, and I haven't selected any calls. Now down here, I have a few different options of what I can do with this call. Um, I can prepare a filter, and what that does is on the back side over here, it, all these packets, it'll filter it down to these eight packets that are involved in this one call. So where this comes in handy is if you're, if you trap you know, a live PBX that's that's running and you've got 20 calls up, it'll list all 20 calls here and then you can ask your client and, and say, you know, what is the phone number, uh, you know, what approximate time I can switch, uh, you know, these timestamps to uh, actual date time. Um, but what is the outbound phone number uh, that you called or the where did the call come from or who made the call? You can kind of get some details to narrow down to which exact trace uh, that you're looking for. And if you ha if you capture the RTP traffic uh, as well as the signaling traffic, you can actually pull up the RTP streams um, and listen uh, and listen to the call. And if they're reporting you know call quality issues or something like that, you should be able to hear that same call quality issue within the trace. Um, and you can also look at the spacing between the packets to see if the packets are, are delayed or, or if packets are getting dropped and so forth. So anyway, just uh, uh, so it can prepare the filter, filter them, this back screen. Uh, we have a flow which will actually bring up the, uh, the SIP stack. So you can watch the signaling go back and forth. Uh, so this is, you know, uh, basically it's laying out this IP address here is the processor of of uh, or the IP address of my processor which handles all the signaling for SIP and this IP address here is uh, my media gateway which handles all the audio for SIP and then this is the actual SIP server so as you can see here you'll see the it'll point and show you the actual port numbers if I'll zoom in on that um, but it'll show you the actual port numbers that you're communicating on and you can see the communication going back and forth. So you actually get to see more of a picture uh, view of what's happening as opposed to uh, having to go through the packets one at a time and, and trying to uh, imagine or write down, okay, this packet went this way, this packet went this way. They went ahead and built all that into Wireshark for you. And they give you some comments over here as to what these packets uh, are, are indicating. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out for the minute. 
uh, I'll show you this prepare filter. So if you notice right up here in this area, this, this field turned green and it's got some frames in there. So what it does is it just identifies by this number here the exact eight packets that are in that. So let me, uh, I'll minimize this window and it'll say frame number 211. So that's that frame, which is my invite message, uh, or frame number 212. Um, so that's, it. so basically it's just going through and it's a big long, uh, list of frames to that capture that specific call. Uh, so very specific. So if I hit apply, then you'll see it filters out all the other information. And now we're down to just the SIP call itself. Okay. I'm going to switch computers for a minute because I actually put this in more of a, a, a friendly format to, to kind of go over. Uh, so just going to switch to there and don't need Wireshark open here. So basically this is, and these are the notes that I've taken on this particular call. Now what I'm not going to do in this tutorial is I'm not going to open these packets and show you um, what the invite packet looks like. That could be a whole video in itself because there's a lot of information contained in these packets. What I wanted to show you was uh, the flow of the outbound, uh, of an outbound SIP call. Uh, now this doesn't show uh, the registration piece, which means what this is taken into account is that I already have the SIP truck up, it's already registered, and I can make and receive phone calls on it. And with that being said, then what we're going to look at is just, you know, what does an outbound call look like in the SIP protocol? Um, so what we'll notice here is, is within, uh, we see the same, this is the same screenshot that I showed you on the previous computer. Uh, but you'll see this invite um, message going out and you'll see SDP. Those letters are, uh, are very important because what that's telling you um, is that within this packet, it also contains the information on uh, the media stream. Uh, so if you see invite without SDP, it doesn't contain any information uh, within, the, within the media stream. Um, and you'll see here that my PBX at 2.30 is offering uh, in the invite message it says hey I'm sending you uh, a call and along with that call I'm gonna say you know I will support the G729 G711 a and the G711 u protocol so these are the three protocols that you can use to communicate with me so that we can get an audio channel set up all right so that's the uh, you know the the first message that will go out on, on any inbound call is an invite message. So we're saying we're inviting the server uh, to take that call. And so immediately you'll see a message coming back that says trying. Um, and what this trying message is, is not necessarily saying that, hey, I found who you're looking for and I'm going to start ringing the call. It's saying that I acknowledge your invite message um, and I'm going to do my best to find this party at this point. So don't get misled by the trying message because uh, you could see another trying message and another trying message following that um, because it's it's attempting to locate who you're trying to to ring. Now almost you know we'll call it a second later uh, we get the 180 ringing. Now this is the confirmation uh, that they found that it found the user that you're trying to call. So in this case. The person that I'm trying to call is the number 972-444-3456. So it says, hey, I've found uh, how to route this call and we've go we're going to initiate the, uh, the ringing of that cycle. Um, so it's just a session update, uh, you know, to let you know, hey, we're ringing that call. We'll keep you updated. Uh, the next thing that you're going to see is a 183 session progress. Um, now in this message you'll see, remember up here we offered three different codecs. Well now the SIP provider is coming back and saying, hey, of these three codecs, I would prefer to use G729 uh, first. Now this is usually uh, in, in PBXs that I've seen and, and SIP devices that I've seen, is you can go in and set a primary, a secondary, and a third uh, codec choice. So if I set my primary to G711, um, and I set my secondary to G729, then when a request like this comes back, 
then my PBX knows, hey, based on this, uh, you know, the way this call came in, you know, the user wants to use the G729 codec. So this might be my second choice. My first choice may have been G722 or something like that. And the the provider would uh, would have said, hey, I'm, I don't support G722, but I do support G729, so I'm going to give you that one back. So it's a negotiation uh, going back and, back and forth. Um, and you'll see it's a series of acknowledgments, uh, you know, going back and forth as well. So, uh, you know, we sent the invite message and these are all acknowledgments saying, Hey, we got your invite message and this is what we're doing to try to route that call. Um, and then, so the next, the next step that you're going to see is, you know, we sent over the 200. Okay. Um, we're sending over the, the media information saying, set the call up on G729. And then also within this packet, you'll see there's more specific information, which it actually gives this IP address out, which is this, uh, which is my audio uh, port. Now it's important to point out where I took this trace, but you're seeing private addresses here. The carrier would actually see um, my public address instead of uh, in this in this packet here. Um, the reason you're seeing the private addresses is because I took this trace behind my uh, firewall so we're on the we're on the private side if i looked at this on the on the front side of my firewall you wouldn't see these addresses you would see my public addresses uh, from from my site now okay so we got the acknowledgement back that hey i see your media setup information i acknowledge that i'll set it up uh, the next piece that you're going to see now is this is the audio stream going back and forth and again, these port numbers become very important because that call now exists between these port numbers. So on the on my side, on the PBX side, I'm using port 40,036. The SIP provider uh, is using port 26,324. Now this is uh, these are UDP ports or RTP ports for real time protocol. Uh, so this is my basically this is my audio conversation going back and forth g729 codec and i know the port number so if i wanted to go back into the wireshark trace i could filter on these ports um, and and look at it as rtp i could even go back and play the callback because i captured uh, captured the audio now let me say this while we're looking at this piece of information when you set up your Wireshark trace, if you didn't include the media stream, so if you didn't plug your media gateway into whatever's capturing your trace, if you didn't do set up port mirroring to capture uh, your media card as well as your uh, signaling side, um, for whatever reason, if you didn't incorporate the media into the trace, you won't see these packets. That doesn't mean that the audio is not there. It just means that they weren't captured in the trace. So you'll see all the SIP signaling, uh, the signal side, but you won't see that the audio, uh, the audio side that got set up. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, my what I did was I made an outbound call. So this is me making an outbound call. They acknowledged. Um, we negotiated the codec. Uh, they acknowledge, uh, you know, we acknowledge the, the codec negotiation. We decided, hey, G729, these ports, and we also gave them the IP information of our media gateway uh, within this packet here, or the 183. Um, I'm sorry, in the acknowledgement packet and in this invite SDP, we'll have uh, all of our media gateway information, um, which I'll go into in, in another tutorial. Uh, so these RTP packets now are going back and forth. We have audio and so the call goes on and for a couple of seconds and then after that I hang up on my side. Uh, so from the PBX side, which is, you know, the dot 230, I terminate the call. Uh, and so what happens then is the buy message goes to the carrier and that indicates if the carrier never receives this buy message, then you know, unless they have a series of timers going in the background to constantly check the connection, the call would never terminate. Um, so, in order so that I know that they receive the message, I don't have to resend it. They send a two hundred OK back to say, okay, I acknowledge the buy message. I'm tearing the call down, and you know that's it. There's uh, 
we set up an invite. Uh, so this is the invite message setting up the call. Uh, there's, uh, you know, trying, ringing, uh, audio information. There's uh, uh, acknowledgement of, of, you know, this is the final selection of what I want to use. Here's all my media information to set up the channel this way. We acknowledge that. And basically, I mean, it's a conversation going back and forth uh, between the two. And the greatest thing about the SIP protocol that I found uh, is unlike proprietary photo, uh, protocols is you can see step by step what is happening in this conversation. So if you can get an understanding of what should be happening, then it makes troubleshooting uh, digital trunks a whole lot easier than it was to troubleshoot analog trunks or to sh uh, troubleshoot uh, T1 uh, or PRI because you can see, you have the tools that are easily accessible to decode uh, and to watch this conversation going back and forth. And so you can set up and you can have an intelligent conversation with the carrier and say, hey, this is what I see on my side. What's happening on your side? And, it, and troubleshooting, you know, trunk issues just became a whole lot easier. The challenge that I found is, is finding a lot of good, easy to digest information on the Internet of, you know, how to break down uh, these SIP traces. So uh, as I learn and as I as I figure stuff out, like I said, I wanted to post these videos um, I'm open to all kinds of feedback because I'm always learning. If there's something that I've covered in this trace that's that's not accurate, then please let me know uh, so I can I can learn from that as well. But uh, my understanding of, of this trace is what I just relayed to you. Uh, so thanks for your time. Uh, my plans for future videos are going to be, um, you know, I want to do incoming calls. So these are all perfect working examples of calls. Uh, and then the next, you know, my next phase is after I've gone through, you know, what it should be doing in a working environment, then, you know, in my uh, career, what I, I troubleshoot issues every day. So as I come across problems, uh, then I can publish those problems uh, in general terms and let you guys know, hey, these are some gotchas that I've found, you know, the real people in the field deploying SIP trunks are running into. Uh, and so kind of watch out for this and, and learn you know, what I've spent hours learning, I'll, I'll give to you guys in a, in a, in a few minutes. So anyway, uh, give me your feedback, uh, subscribe to my uh, channel, and I'm going to try to get some videos out on a more regular basis. Thanks a lot for your time, guys.